Hey, happy new year everybody. Bill DeFreitas for the GCVC. And first off, thank you guys for the continued support. It's much appreciated. It's been a weird year, but a lot of fun. Uh, if you don't already, just take a quick second to like and subscribe to the channel. It's a huge help for us. I want to kick the year off with a mini feature on a rapidly rising MMA gym coming out of Niagara. We all know Henzo Gracie's infamous blue basement of New York City, which has produced some of the highest level grapplers and MMA fighters in the past decade. I want to introduce to you the red basement of the North, Niagara Top Team. Political statement? Maybe. But one thing that's for sure is they're producing some of the highest level grapplers and MMA fighters that Canada's going to see in the next few years. It's a revolving door of some of Canada's most talented wrestlers and grapplers out there and you never know who you could be sharing the mats with. Sometimes there's top level black belts like Andre Grambois and Steve Sims. You have Olympic caliber wrestlers like Clay Pie, Ligret Sadiku, and Javon Belfour. And an endless list of mixed martial artists who you're inevitably going to see in the UFC in the near future. Athletes like Aaron Jeffrey, Anthony Romero, Jasmine Jazudavicious, Luke Roberts, Alex Moore, the list goes on. I first met Chris Prickett last year at the first Luchador event. After that, I had the privilege of sitting down in the room and watching a couple practices while the Brock Badgers were getting ready for U Sports. And recently, I had the chance to sit down with Chris to chat about how he got into grappling, the Jiu Jitsu wrestling crossover, and I tried to get the secrets of Marty Calder. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy the interview. Three days a week is enough. It's, this is the start of the practice. This is the start of what we have to do to get wherever you want. There are some of you guys have your goals aligned with. Let's go, a couple more here. We got five minutes. Thank you very much for uh, joining me here. Of course, thanks for coming. Um, I just wonder if you just give me a quick background on your wrestling experience, where you started. Like my, your, your whole, options. where it all began? Yeah, just quick, like, like where did you wrestle? Yeah, so I started when I was in grade five. I was actually on, uh, my, bro my older brother wrestled, my dad wrestled, it kind of was in the family. And uh, the town I'm from, Fergus, it's actually pretty big on wrestling. There's quite a few wrestlers that have come from that small town. At the time it was like population 10,000, but yeah. <coughs> quite a few wrestlers came from Fergus. So I was in grade five and I was on my way actually to watch my brother wrestle in the tournament. And my dad's like, hey, why don't you jump in or something? And that's how it started. So I was like, in, I was like nine years old and I jumped into a high school wrestling tournament and got my ass kicked. And then, <laughs> and then yeah, I wrestled my whole life. I wrestled for uh, Guelph University and uh, the Guelph Wrestling Club and then my high school and stuff. but. Okay. That's pretty much it. So how did you get tied up with Brock? With Brock? So I moved here seven years, six years ago when I was done my my career. Okay. And then I moved here and started coaching. Yeah. Okay. Like I knew Marty I, since I was a kid. Right? Like okay. it's a pretty small community. Like the jiu-jitsu community. Everybody kind of knows everybody. So yeah. I always knew Marty and he had coached me even at some like, he coached me at the Commonwealth Games actually. And I just... I always clicked with Marty and it, I respected him immensely so it was a no-brainer when he asked me to uh, to help out at the university. Well, cool, cool. yeah, that's kind of the guy I wanted to ask you about. Yeah. I'm just getting to know the, the scene and whatnot. Yeah. I guess he's kind of like a bit of a legendary figure around here. He is a, he is a legend. Yeah. So. <laughs> he's a complete legend. Everywhere you go, like, if you have cauliflower ear in St. Catharines and you go around, like, they're like, uh, Marty Calder and I'm like, I'm his assistant coach, yeah, so I know him pretty well. Yeah. yeah. And we got the picture of him up in here, paying our respects. Yeah. So, what makes him so special? What's the what's the deal? What's the secret? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's a secret. He's just a hard worker. He just uh, he just values all the principles that um, you know wrestling kind of. I don't know. To be a good wrestler, you got to have like hard work and discipline, and you got to be dedicated, and you got to be all these things. And he just embodies that himself. So that's just who he is to his core. He's an intense guy. I mean, on the mats, off the mats, he's just like anyone else, but on the mats, he's an intense guy and he has high expectations and you just, I don't know, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> it's no special sauce, it's just day in and day out. He's in in the mornings with the athletes, he's in at night, so that's, 
you know, that's how I try to be. I try to be the same like Marty. <laughs> Just put the time in, the real hard work, and, uh, and then the results will show. Okay, okay. So when did you start getting into JITS? Uh, so JITS, I started getting into a little bit when I was in Guelph. I was coaching Jason Sago wrestling. Oh, okay, okay. So he was from Guelph as well, or he went to school at Guelph. So um, he would be like getting ready for a fight and he would ask me wrestling questions. So I'd be throwing some wrestling and then he'd be like, oh, what about if this happens? Yeah, like a jiu-jitsu thing. I'm like, I don't really know anything about jiu-jitsu. So just like coaching him, I wanted to learn more about jiu-jitsu to help him, to help better understand for myself what I'm teaching him, right? If you show a technique in wrestling that ends up getting choked out, I don't really want to be showing that to a guy that's going in a cage yeah, and fighting. So I started picking it up then and then just kind of fell in love with it. I never, you know, as a wrestler, you always think wrestling's a be-all, end-all. And it's like every other sport. <coughs> Is this outside thing, but then I started learning about jujitsu. I'm like, oh man, this is so cool. It's like just like wrestling, but with some different moves. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. Um, what What do you think jits guys can take from wrestlers and vice versa? Uh, like definitely the intensity that wrestling brings. Um, I was just talking to Javon <coughs> and uh, and saying like. You can be a fighter, like you can fight MMA and not necessarily be a fighter, like, but in wrestling, like you have to, you almost have to be a fighter because every situation in wrestling, there's no like, there's no stopping. Like in Jiu Jitsu, you can kind of stop and rest. In wrestling, there's really no point in time when you can rest. So six minutes is not like that long, but when you're wrestling, it, it's like six minutes consistent is like the level of, of fatigue that you can experience and um, it's just, I mean, in general, to generalize it, it it's a more intense sport. Yeah. And so wrestlers bring that intensity to jiu-jitsu, and that's something that a lot of jiu-jitsu... I think at the highest level, you see these guys like Ryan Gordon. He's an intense dude. Like, the top-tier guys, they have it all. Yeah. But, like, generalizing that intensity and, and work ethic, um, the jiu-jitsu community probably lacks a little bit. And then what wrestlers can learn from jiu-jitsu is just, like, the detail. Like, it, the, the sport is just, you know, it's never-ending breaking the littlest details down and sometimes wrestling can miss that a little bit you know it's just come in and you just work hard and you don't really focus on those little details so I think a good combination and that's kind of how we try to do it here we have our hard practices like today where the details are very minimal and the workload is very high and then we'll have sessions where it's the opposite you know the workload is not it's not intense it's not hard but we're just focusing on the small details as far as coaching the MMA, do you guys try and stay more grappling based or do you just work to like what the athlete's strengths are? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, like we're obviously more like, I guess we'd be known as more of a grappling gym because of, of Brock and my affiliation with that. But like D-Marks is like, he's a, he's a striker and a grappler. He, like he's a complete, the complete, complete package. So we work everything. Like we have our striking classes, we have our jits classes and our wrestling classes. So we work it all. Some of the guys like train, you know, we have some guys that will train with Parabellum and with Niagara Top Team and so, like a lot of the guys are getting their pad works with Linden uh, or some of them are with D-Marks and you know, so everybody has like their own situation I guess but as a team we try to cover everything. Cool, cool. And uh, my last question for you is uh, why do you grapple? Why do I grapple? Yeah. I get bored if I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? No, That's I don't know. I love it man. It's, it's, yeah. It's a part of life as much as it is like, you know, eating or sleeping to me. If I'm not, uh, like I got a bit of a banged up knee right now, so I'm like, you know, my sessions are a little bit more spread out than what they usually are, but it's, I don't know. It's, I, I would go crazy if I couldn't grapple or, or wrestle or jujitsu or, or train, I would go crazy. So maybe it's partially like mental health for me. <laughs> and I just love the sport. You never stop learning. Like I just, it's, it's fun. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah, I just like to ask people because it's like, yeah. it's probably the hardest working sport you can do. Yeah. And the usual payout for sports, you know, there's going to be a yeah. million dollar contract yeah. and that, right? Yeah, it's, it's not definitely not right? for the money. Yeah, so it, yeah. It's, it's interesting to know like, what makes people come in and fucking yeah. grind the way that they do. Yeah, I think it's like, you, you know, it may be compared, like, I've never been into like music or like, you know, playing an instrument or anything, but I bet you once you start getting the hang of it, just how sick it would be to play the guitar. Yeah. Like one, it, like grappling is like that. Once you start getting the hang of it and you just see the, you know, the potential of like growth and, and once you get better at something and then you get better and then you work hard and then it feel good because you worked hard. It's just, I don't know, it's never ending once you get kind of hooked on it, I guess. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I feel bad for people that like, you know, 
compete in wrestling and then after wrestling it's it's not a sport that you can really do recreationally so a lot of wrestlers once they're done wrestling it's like that's it and you know where jujitsu you can like play a little bit more of a laid-back style and so I find myself I do a lot more jujitsu now than I do wrestling but yeah for sure well I mean some of the guys around here like you gotta come up with uh, wrestling class I'm like maybe 10 years ago yeah not, yeah exactly not, not, it's not something you want to jump yeah, in yeah. but we have some good partners too like yeah. we always I mean you see tonight like there's there's a lot of good guys and stuff but nobody's trying to intentionally hurt anyone so I think that well, I think one of the misconceptions from jits to wrestling is you see the takedowns and you're like, oh, everything's just like banging on. But when I finally got a chance to sit down and see some of the guys drilling, like yeah. it's just as smooth as us doing stuff off our back. Yeah, like, and, and the wrestlers watch you guys doing jits and they're like, you guys are crazy, man, breaking elbows and watching heel yeah. hooks and stuff. It's like, but then you watch wrestling and you think the takedowns are intense. Like oh, it's crazy. both yeah. both sports are. <laughs> I don't know. I, I would rather like if I had to if I had to like grapple for ten minutes or wrestle for ten minutes right now, I'd probably choose the, the grappling as far as like injury prevention it's probably a little safer because like when you fall from your feet to the ground there's more risk of getting injured yeah. where in like grappling there's more controlled situations but it's usually like we need more wrestling and jits like, yeah i know i neglected it for like five like, yeah. six years and there's always that bit of doubt when you're starting the match and then yeah. when i far, started, finally started feeling a bit comfortable with wrestling i don't know what it is you just feel a bit more uh more manly yeah but yeah you, know, you, just feel like, <laughs> you feel like not too worried about submissions as much not like yeah scared or not like stupid gives you a level of confidence that, but, yeah, i guess confidence yeah is a little, little higher, I yeah think. Well, and it's same with wrestling though, like if you're afraid of anyone getting into your legs versus when you learn how to defend once someone's in, like, I mean, there's just so many layers to the sport and, and wrestling is a component of jiu-jitsu. So yeah, to, to neglect that is, is bizarre, but I think more and more you're seeing um, jiu-jitsu, like straight jiu-jitsu guys recognizing that. So yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah, it's a good crossword. Yeah. All right, we'll just, uh, leave it at that. Sounds That's good, it. man. Cool. Of course, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course, buddy. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to follow All Things Niagara Top Team on social media. Give us a subscribe to help support the channel. Our goal is to pump up Canadian grappling and wrestling as much as possible, and every like and subscribe helps. All right, thanks, guys. See you soon.